Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, Army rescues wife of Emir of Bama in Nigeria's northeast state of Borno, says Boko Haram camps in the area have been largely cleared. Former President Olushago Basanjo calls for the investigation of federal lawmakers over law alleged budget padding. The Senate insists allegations is false. A federal agency warns of an impending flash floods in parts of the country. Our state governors to put in place artificial reservoirs to check the flow of water. And South Sudan President replaces Rick Machar with Mining Minister Tabang Dengai as Vice President. On Business News tonight, federal government reveals benchmark for Nigeria's medium-term expenditure framework. And on Sports News, FIFA President Gianni Infantino meets with President Mohamed Buhari at the presidential villa to discuss football development in Nigeria. I'm Gloria Umezio Kian from Abuja. Nigerian Labour Congress condemns casualization of Nigerian workers by multinational companies. We begin tonight in Nigeria's northeast, where the army says it has rescued the abducted wife of the Emir of Bama, a Borno town previously overrun by the Boko Haram insurgents. The mother of five was forcefully taken away in September 2014 with two of her children, one of whom is said to have been murdered by the insurgents. Family sources told Channels Television that the woman is in her 40s and was rescued along Damboa Road following ongoing military operations in the area. General Officer Commanding 7th Division, Major General Victor Ezugu, handed over the rescued woman to the Emir, Mr. Kiari Umar Ibn El Kanami, in a private family ceremony attended by the Borno State Deputy Governor, Usman Dukwa, and wife of the State Governor, Nana Shitima. Journalists were barred from covering the event at the family compound of the Emir along Old GRA in Maiduguri, where he has been taking refuge since Bama was sacked by the insurgents. In the meantime, the Nigerian army says it can now proudly say that Boko Haram has been largely defeated. This according to the acting director, Army Public Relations, Colonel Zaini Guzman, who explained that there are no longer camps of the insurgents in the northeastern part of the country where they are found in clusters. Colonel Usman was speaking at the inauguration of the strategic communication calls for senior officers of the Nigerian Army School in pub of Public Relations and Information Boni Camp in Lagos. Former President Olushego Basanjo has waded into the controversy over the allegations of budget padding by the leadership of the House of Representatives and called for an investigation. The former president made his position known to State House correspondents after meeting with President Muhammad Buhari, whom he advised to be careful with the lawmakers. Chief Obasanjo said the allegations cements his statement that the National Assembly is made up of corrupt lawmakers. A member of the House of Representatives and former chairman of the House Committee on Appropriation, Honorable Abdul Muin Jibrin, had accused the House principal officers, including the Speaker, Mr. Yakub Dogara, of having attempted to pad the 2016 budget with 40 billion Naira constituency projects. Well, if you say that I have said it in the past, and uh, if there are people who didn't believe what I said in the past, past then you now say that what, is, what has come out confirm what I have said in the past. Then you can say what I have said in the past uh, is what I will say now. Would you want to call an in in investigation into this issue of adding of, of, of budget? How would you want it to be investigated? No question of an investigation. We should get, get men and women of integrity in the place, and the president should be very uh, vigilant. And, uh, whatever should not pass, should not pass. Nigeria's former president, Chief Olushago Obasojo. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives may be under pressure to allow the anti graft agency to investigate allegations of budget padding by the lawmakers. The executive director of Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap Aditokumbo Mumini, who was our guest on our morning show, Sunrise Daily, said the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC, as a matter of urgency, must step in now and investigate the padding allegations.
There's this fundamental principle in adjudication. You cannot investigate yourself. The result will be predictable. Let me tell you, if the House of Representatives is speaker consists of a panel, as it is, or there's an expanding panel, the result will be predictable because it is a map. All you hear subsequently will be, we have held an intensive session and it has been resolved. You hear any other thing? You see, the reference should not be to the from any of them. It should not be that somebody is referring anything to the ICPC. In Senate environments, when matters of probity, accountability becomes matters of public knowledge, the appropriate organs set up by the government to handle such things will come in automatically. Nobody should refer any other, anything. This EFC is just waiting. This is a matter of public interest, a matter of public concern. In the meantime, the Senate has responded to the padding allegations that there was no such thing as padding in the budgeting process of the National Assembly. Speaking with journalists in the National Assembly, the majority leader, Senator Ali Ndume, says that it's unfortunate to have such allegations rocking the House of Representatives. He says the former chairman of the House Committee on Appropriation, Representative Abdul Mumini Jibrin, should have explored internal mechanism to address his grievances instead of going to the press. I want to talk about something that I really don't know. But what is happening in the House of Rep is just very unfortunate. Because that is, we have, we have processes and procedure of doing things in the National Assembly. If somebody has an issue, he knows what is not supposed to be the, the press, that is supposed to be where somebody will carry his grievances. But I think um, they are going to work on it. I personally, because I'm part of the House, have been trying to reach out to both sides. And we are working on that. That is as far as can, I can say. It's not good what is happening. And um, this issue that you people talk about budget padding, there is nothing like budget padding. If it is the National Assembly that works on a budget, then you don't call it padding. Because padding is like illegality. But when you think I add and subtract a budget, is that you are working on the budget. See, these are two different things. The United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime has pledged 100 million naira to fighting drug-related crimes, corruption and human trafficking in Nigeria. Country representative for the agency, Christina Albertine, made this known during her visit to Channel's television today. She said that the amount is higher than most other countries because the United Nations considers Nigeria a strategic partner in Africa. Later, she talked about the United Nations efforts at helping Nigeria fight corruption, working within the framework of the United Nations Convention Against the Crime. We are working in the framework of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption, which is again a global framework by, that was agreed upon by all the UN member states. So it's a universal instrument that was ratified by Nigeria. Nigeria was very active in the elaboration of this uh, document. And if you look at the convention, it talks about uh, three major issues. Again, it is the penalization of corrupt offenses. And corruption offenses is, offenses is not limited only to uh, paying bribes or to uh, taking bribes. It could, for example, also include trafficking of influence, obstruction of justice, bribery of foreign officials. So there's a whole set of corruptive, uh, corrupt offenses that has been defined in the, co in the convention that countries that have ratified it, the state parties, have to penalize. The second pillar is the, the investigation and prosecution of these crimes so that we have a successful um, conviction. Uh, the third pillar is the prevention of uh, corruption and the fourth pillar is uh, asset recovery because of course countries that have lost um, assets to corruption, they want to have that money back. So we work in this framework with 14 agencies in, uh, of the federal government to address corruption in Nigeria. Market women in Edo State have pledged their support for the candidates of the All Progressives Congress in the forthcoming governorship elections in the state, Mr. Godwin Obasaki. Speaking at a rally at the Samuel Wemudia Stadium, the president of the Edo State Market Women Association retired, reiterated her association's resolve to back and sustain the legacies of the Oshomole administration. On his part, Mr. Oshomole asked the women to trust Mr. Obasaki for the job. 
Market women in Edo State singing and dancing at the Samuel Ogbemudia Stadium in what could be mistaken as a victory party for the All Progressives Congress. The women who defied the early morning downpour say they are gathered here in their thousands to pledge their support for the state's governor, Adam Sushomile, as well as the party's flag bearer in the state, Godwin Obasaki. Speaking in pigeon to the crowd, Governor Oshamale urged the market women to mark the difference between the APC and the PDP in the state. No say una carry APC card. The card where una carry na card of what is good. Who do good, you know. Who do bad, you know. Our people they take and talk, say if woman never married two men. You know, Govino say one man is strong past another man. The governor also used the occasion to make an announcement the cheering crowd seems to have been waiting for all afternoon. Today, I approve, and next week, we go release it. 120 million naira to support your credit, to re-equip your shops, to sell so that you can look after your families. For me, it don't show me the road. It don't show me how we go do something. It don't show me, say, if you hold a woman, you hold a nation. If you train a woman, you train a nation. If you empower a woman, you empower a nation. So I not get choice as an next governor. I go empower Una. We want to assure you of our readiness to support his ambition to become the governor of Edo State with our prayers to enable him embrace your sterling leadership qualities in the interest of all Edo people. Going by the turnout and show of solidarity by these market women, the governor and his team may well count on their support come September the 10th. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. That's according to the Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency, which is predicting flash floods in Lagos, Ibadan, Port Hackett, Sokoto, Kaduna, Meduguri, Makadi, and Yola. Speaking at the unveiling of the 2016 annual flood outlook, the Director General of the agency, Dr. Moses Beckley, asked state governments to put in place artificial reservoirs to check the flow of the flood. He also predicted that some of the nation's ri rivers would overflow their banks. Nigeria has experienced its fair share of flooding over the years and its attendant consequences. In 2012, Nigeria witnessed what has been described as the most devastating flood in her history. Since then, the Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency has been making public the flood outlook for each year. This year's prediction sees a higher flooding than last year, and the areas to be affected are mostly urban areas. Coastal flooding should be expected by Yelsa, Rivers, Delta, Ondo, and Lagos State. Um, when the sea rise, what are we to expect? And so that is why. Um, so much to be done by our people. The outlook also predicted river flooding in Niger, Benue, Sokoto Rima, Anambra, Imo, Cross River, and Ogun Oshun rivers. In part two, after the break, we bring you an update on the story of a nine year old who was held in chains in a church in Ogun State. Stay with us.